All right, what's up everybody? It's Googlings back with another guide or comp video. Um, for those of you guys who don't know who I am, uh, my name is Googlings. I'm a former rank one and a competitive player from NA. And yeah, today I got a really interesting video. The title is not a clickbait. This really is probably one of the strongest strategies that at least I can personally recall um, in recent times, maybe possibly of all time, but it's hard to say for sure. I personally have not seen anyone when given the conditions to play this build, uh, get anything but first, even at higher levels of play. I've coached my friends, but I've backseated high level players, uh, people GM plus at least in previous sets and people challenger plus in previous sets as well, as well as current uh, players who are diamond and above play this comp and pretty much it has a 100% win rate and um yeah I guess if this is interesting let's get straight up into the video so okay first of all and foremost like what is this build right the title is not lying it is a ZZ rot based build um, I have it in the builder but because I can't show ZZ rots I just have the dummies replacing the ZZ rots pretty much all you do is you need to hit this one augment it is very contingent on hitting this one augment but once you hit it you can play it and you can hit it on either 3-1 or 3-2 and the way this augment works is find vintage completed items uh, left on your bench for three turns transform into support anvils and pretty much when you pop these support anvils when you sell them they're going to open up an armory that gives you a choice of four uh support items so then what are the support items you can see all the support items are here pretty much not all of these are relevant the most relevant ones are going to be uh of course zz rot it is a zz rot based build and then some of the other ones that kind of like enhance your zz rots and those are going to be uh randuins zeeks and ages primarily but uh, most importantly, it's going to be Aegis and ZZ Rot. So, okay. And then once you've done that, as soon as you hit this augment, the way it works, you have to complete items, right? So you complete items, leave them on your bench. It doesn't matter what item you complete. And like, it really doesn't matter. The only exception, and I'll talk about this more later, but the only exception is you kind of want to hold uh, Rod, Belts, and sometimes Bows, because you do really want to hit a Morello or a Red Buff at some point in your game, um, ideally. Otherwise, the only other item you can kind of want is Adaptive Helm or some sort of um, mana item for a Morello spreader in the late game. Normally, it's going to be Morgana for most of the game. As you can see here, it's going to be Quay once you get to the late game. But once again, we'll talk about that a little bit further on. So the way this build works is that you really are just relying on your ZZ Rots to do damage. So if you guys are familiar with older sets, obviously Bow Belt used to build into ZZ Rot. And the old ZZ Rot, the way it worked is that when a unit died that was equipped with ZZ Rot, pretty much when it would die, it would spawn a ZZ Rot that would, you know, hit people. And now the way it works is that you can, once you have a ZZ Rot, it's a support item now, once you have a ZZ Rot, you can place ZZ Rots on your board. You can move them around as if they were actual units. And they benefit from um, certain traits and certain augments. But it's unclear right now as to exactly what augments and traits they benefit fully from. But it is clear that they do benefit from Heavenly. So naturally, because they have a benefit from Heavenly, and Heavenly is a team-wide stat bonus on, you know, obviously including ZZ Rots, then currently the best way to play is with Heavenly. And the way that works is you just stack as many Heavenly units as you can. Obviously, if you have a Heavenly Emblem, it's super useful as well. But pretty much this board is so good because it's so cheap. As soon as you have like one ZZ Rot, it comes online. Ideally, by the end of the game, you have three or more ZZ Rots. But the build works more than fine with just two and at least one Aegis. So yeah, and then you just put a bunch of Heavenly units uh, on your board. As you guys can observe, most of the Heavenly units are of low cost. So there's two two costs, two one costs and a three cost obviously wukong comes online uh, later into the game and you can play that and then otherwise you just play more ghana for um just your morello and it gives sage once you have wukong and another important thing is actually you want to be playing ghostly and that's going to be played with shen most of the time um if you have a cane two uh you could choose to play cane two but functionally speaking shen is not going to be much weaker the end cap of this board isn't really played around heavenly the end cap of this board is to swap out some of the worst heavenly units uh, most notably kha'zix uh, and malphite obviously they're the lowest cost and play something like uh, Dragon Lords. So if you guys don't know what Dragon Lords does, it gives you a team-wide attack speed bonus as well as uh, doing damage to the entire enemy team just after eight seconds of combat. This is a really strong way to cap out your endgame boards regardless of whether or not you're playing the ZZ Rot build. So if you guys are familiar with this at all, even in your other games, if you don't have this build online, you can still feel free to play Dragon Lord. That being said, that game ideally, you want to be removing some of these Dragon Lord units. You want to be fitting in Rakan, who's a Dragon Lord unit, fits really well with Soraka. Janna fits really well with Azir. So if you end up playing Azir, like obviously your Azir doesn't actually benefit your ZZ Rots because invokers don't benefit your ZZ Rots just because they don't have mana. But that being said, uh, you're playing better units and you're playing a slightly better trait. You do want to cap out with legendaries as with most comps. But for the most part, I'd say for maybe 80 to 9% of your game will look something like Heavenly just because of how cheap it is. And it is like your avenue of getting to fast nine. Obviously, ideally, they are upgraded just because the way Heavenly works is that like 
each bonus um, gets increased based on the star level of the heavenly units. So it is important to find some upgrades here and there. Uh, don't be afraid to roll on level six and seven if you have your Zizarot online because um, being able to streak with this comp is really, really important. That being said, you will be able to win most of your fights and yeah, it's just a really strong comp. Uh, finally, I do, should mention that Obsidian Cleaver is quite useful just because it shreds both armor and MR. Um, given that most of your items will be support items, you're not going to really have access to, um, you know, shred or anti-heal, which is why you want to go for Merlo. And sometimes when you pop open your anvil, you're not going to get Locket, Zeke's, Aegis, or Zizirot. So uh, something like Obsidian Cleaver is quite useful. Otherwise, something like a Zephyr or a Shroud is also useful just because you're going to be able to use them to inhibit how the enemy team can act. So those are also useful. Virtue of the Martyr also works really well on um, on your team just because like it does affect the Zizirots. And the only augment that gives a ton of stats that I'm really interested in with this augment that I've confirmed to work is Heavy Hitters. Uh, for those of you guys don't know what Heavy Hitters does, it's on the screen, but uh, units with at least 1500 max HP gain a bunch of AD. ZZ Rots always have 1500 or more max HP, so pretty much you're just, uh, they're getting at least 15 to even up to, uh, I believe they have 3000 HP, so up to 30 AD on all your ZZ Rots, as well as some of your other units will be receiving stats. This is a really, really strong augment for this comp for obvious reasons. Obviously, 100% of the ZZ Rod's damage is coming from auto attacks, and they will be doing, you know, some 80% of your team's damage. So yeah, someone's going to ask, I know, I'm sure, is that like, what happens to your game if you don't hit ZZ Rod? The short answer to that is you are boned. The thing is, it is pretty unlikely to not hit at least one ZZ Rod, and most of the time you will hit two. Uh, I personally have not encountered someone not hitting a single ZZ Rod. It's very, very rare. Certain portals, uh, encounters, and item augments also provide you with more opportunities to be popping these support anvils to be giving you more ZZ Rods. So I find that this comp is still as broken as advertised. And later on, I'll show you a little bit of footage on how this comp works. This is like one setup you can do. Another setup that um, I like is obviously just this. It's it's contingent depending on like the type of support items you get. So like if you don't get Locket, something like this works really, really well because you're getting Randuin's uh, instead on your ZZ Rots. Still, as well as getting the Aegis attack speed and stats. 30% attack speed obviously is a lot. Zeke's also gives 30% attack speed. So there's no need necessarily to stack Zeke's just because Aegis and Zeke's give the same amount. Whereas uh, Aegis oftentimes gives you a better positioning setup than Zeke's just because you can get more value out of it. Um, for those of you who don't know, Aegis is also a really overstated item. Just feel free to like stack as many Aegis as you can. Uh, ideally you have three, but you know, going two, one even is going to be more than okay. Next up, I'm going to show you the VOD from a Chinese player, which is uh, who I got it from. So I will leave his uh, Liquipedia profile in the uh, description below, but it's 60 second. For those of you guys who don't know who this is, this is a very frequent rank one player from China. If you guys have followed any uh, Chinese competitive TFT, you guys must have probably heard his name. He's a very prominent player there, big streamer. And yeah, this is where I found the comp from. And let's just see some of his gameplay. In his game, this was like on 3-2 before he sees the fine vintage augment. He's playing, I don't exactly understand uh, what he was playing for just because I don't think he was speaking much in the VOD. And even if he was, I don't personally understand Mandarin. So I can't translate. That being said, um, all that matters is that on 3-2, he's going to click find vintage. He has a heavenly emblem from a wandering trainer uh, portal. So obviously that's really beneficial for him. But let's just see kind of like how he plays it and what the comp looks like as the game plays on. So he has, notice his first augment is not really all that useful. It's Metabolic Accelerator. Uh, he's currently playing Lost Streak, so he's accumulating some gold. He has some of the heavenly units, not really. He just has Malphite as of right now, and he's going to be playing Fortune. Most of the time, if you are taking this augment on 3-2, you are going to have to be forced to lose Streak just because you're going to be sitting up to, you know, all, pretty much you're going to be sitting all your components and all your items on your bench. So you're not going to be having that board power that uh, items would normally give. So bear in mind that you will be uh, playing from low HP most of the time, but just once you guys kind of see the VOD, you'll see that once you get the ZZ Rot build online, you will be streaking with ease. So here, just takes fine vintage. Not too much to talk about. Immediately slam two items. Um, so in his spot, you could actually slam a third item and maybe he would. I would say there's two reasons that he's not doing it. One is he wants to hold the belt for an anti-heal item of some sort, whether that be Sunfire, which is significantly less optimal, or Morello. Um, another is that he's also playing Fortune, so he can't replace his Kobuko right now, which is giving him Fortune. I'm assuming that's uh, kind of a big deal for him, just because, as I said previously, especially when you're taking it on 3-2, you are going to be loose streaking for most of the game. So if you're playing Fortune, obviously that aligns really well with uh, the game plan leading up from, uh, from this point forward. And seeing as how he can't um, pretty much use that belt anyway, maybe he finds his way to a Morello later, right? Items don't matter. He just takes highest gold off the carousel because the actual component you make doesn't really, really matter. Uh, what matters is just that you're getting an item component at all. 
So um, in the future, like future item augments, once again, is are going to be really powerful. There's not that many that give uh, multiple items, certain prismatic ones, such as uh, Unleashed Arcana, uh, Blinding Speed, and Overwhelming Force will give you two and a half items. So obviously that represents potentially two and a half more ZZ Rods, right? So obviously stuff like that is really strong. I guess let's just uh, skip to the part where he gets ZZ Rods online because at that point, the game actually becomes interesting. So, okay, we can see he take, he has two Aegis and a ZZ Rod right now. He's holding a Hodge on bench and a belt. So it does look like that that belt that we saw earlier is going to be uh, looking to be turned into a Morello. Otherwise, he's just this Hodge is going to turn into another support item from him off his Augment. And he, he got the two Aegis, so we can see him positioning in what is the standard way and um he's still choosing to play fortune i believe he just hasn't cashed out yet but obviously once he cashes that out we'll see how the game progresses and i know okay some people in the comments might say okay wow this is a fortune game um it's it, like it's kind of weird to see to like look at a vod where he's playing fortune because obviously fortune represents some more resources but i think once you guys see these easy rots kind of going crazy you'll see kind of like where I'm coming from with this build. So Orn items, I actually believe do not turn into, um, he got the Orn item encounter. Orn items, I believe do not turn into um, support items from Fine Vintage, but yeah, I mean, that's just going to be something that's relevant in some of the cases. So as you can see, he's kind of, like he's not completely online yet, right? Because he only has one ZZ Rot, but you'll see soon that once he comes online, these ZZ Rots are going to be, as you notice in this fight, obviously he doesn't have that many other items, but his Syndra did kind of have two items. But you can see that the ZZ Rod did top DPS in this um, in this fight. Uh, he has Wukong on bench. It's just a small mistake. Obviously, uh, as soon as he gets the chance, he's going to put that onto his board. He has Zaya now, Hui. That's another ZZ Rod. So Rakan's also online now. So we have both Rakan and Wukong. And we're going to see this build get extremely strong. And I just want to show you guys kind of like the damage charts at the end of the fight. Also, as you'll notice, the ZZ Rods aren't really taking any damage. Like they're living the entire fight tanking a bunch as well as he doesn't have a single upgrade on his board. Yes, he does have multiple five costs on his board, most notably Ahoy, but one, they're not really itemized well, and as well, he's also fighting people um, on the enemy team with uh, five costs on the board, and he's pretty much destroying them with no contest. And once again, ZZ Rots are doing a huge portion of his team damage. Naturally, Hui is a really strong unit right now, regardless of whether or not you're playing this build. Uh, obviously, some of the support items, most notably Aegis, will be really helpful for your way, just getting more casts off. But we can see the ZZ Rots are doing 2,000 damage, right? And, yeah. Fight from start to finish against a 2-star Yone board. Um, it's not the strongest board of all time. He does go for the Morello now off the Carousel for his way. Because uh, when you when all your items are you know support items, you can't get anti-heal. So once again, that's why Morello is really important. Morello in general in the set is really, really important. Anyway, just because uh, Hui, who's the strongest unit in the game right now, as well as some of the faded builds, uh, often heal a, a lot. So just making sure that you have some sort of Morello is really important. And Hui, seeing as how he heals your entire team, is also really, really important. Pretty much like the value of this build is just that like, because the board is so cheap and you come online so early, like just, I mean, the ZZ Rots have a lot of uh, attack damage, just like their base AD is super high. So scaling their attack speed just means they do a bunch of damage. Naturally at this point, like he has an itemized Hui, mana items uh, with a Morello. So he's obviously really strong um, regardless, but it's just providing a lot of frontline and a lot of like um, chip damage that otherwise you cannot really have access to. I mean, that's all I really want to show. I will let the kind of footage run a little bit longer just so that like maybe you guys, if you guys are interested in seeing like how some of the later game fights go, especially as other players get their boards online. Um, but otherwise that's the bulk of the video. So in terms of like being able to play this on your own, I'm sure, you know, it's a rather straightforward strategy, honestly. I think if you guys are, interested in trying it out it is definitely worth trying it out even if you know it, you don't end up finding the exact success i think being able to play a strategy like this before it inevitably gets nerfed because it hasn't been confirmed to get nerfed yet but we have been talking to the devs about it it's we could just assume that it is getting nerfed so if you get the chance to play this then you know please feel free and go ahead otherwise i'll show a couple more of the late game fights um before he has way two maybe just to you know show off some more of the zero rod damage but <laughs> otherwise yeah the, uh, the video is good. I guess I'll take a moment to say that if you guys like the content, feel free to like and subscribe and, you know, leave a comment down below on what type of content you guys would like to see. Another fight, he has a Malphite 1 and a Kha'Zix 2 on his board in the late game. Obviously, he does have Rakan and Wukong 2, but he completely blows up another board pretty much without losing a single unit. These Rots actually did not do that much damage this fight, but and now he has Hui 2, so it's a little bit, it's a little bit different. But normally, um, if you guys have seen any of the fast line boards throughout the set, uh, just a Hui 2 with mediocre frontline isn't going to win you the game. But obviously one of the 
kind of the benefits of playing this comp is the fact that you can easily slot in a Hui and obviously have him do what he's doing. All right, that's the video, guys. Um, until next time.